You have to go back three years to March 2007 to find the last time the U.S. economy created as many jobs as were created last month. Three years. And yet, the 162,000 new jobs did not put a dent in the unemployment rate, which remains at 9.7 percent. Fifteen million Americans were still looking for work in March, and of those, six and a half million have been unemployed for more than 27 weeks. And the broadest measure of unemployment, those who have given up looking for a job or cannot find a full-time job, bumped up to 16.9 percent. Joining me now, the president's top economic advisor, Dr. Larry Summers. Dr. Summers, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Jake. Now, if you remove the temporary census worker jobs, 48,000, you're left with 114,000 new jobs. Big businesses have retained earnings. They are not spending that, uh, that money on creating new jobs. They're investing in abroad. They're buying their own stock. They're buying other companies. Why are they not creating new jobs? They're starting to. We're in a very different place than we were uh, a year ago. A year ago, we were losing 600,000 jobs a month. Now the process of job creation has started. We expect uh, that it will accelerate. But we've got to do more to make sure that there's demand in this economy that will create more jobs. We are in no position to rest or to be complacent just because of this jobs report. That's why the president thought it was so important to sign into law the incentive program two weeks ago that allows the waiver of payroll taxes for companies that hire an unemployed person. That's why the president is pushing for spending on new construction uh, projects, new infrastructure projects. That's why uh, we've got to focus particularly on small business at this point. You know, if you look at uh, the data, the situation with large businesses is serious, but the situation in small business is devastating. That's why the president put forth proposals in December and wants to see Congress act on his measures to increase the flow of credit to a uh, small business. That's why it's so important that we're seeing a big increase, more than 10 percent, in the tax refunds that Americans are getting uh, this April, which will put them in a position uh, to, spe to spend more and start that process of uh, job creation. That's why it's so important to have passed health insurance, which is going to give a tax credit that's actually retroactive to January to uh, small, uh, to small businesses. We've got to do everything we can to provide the incentives to create the framework for more job creation uh, in this economy. We cannot rest where we are. Now, you said that you think it's going to accelerate. You guys have been touting a bar graph showing job losses during the previous administration, job gains uh, since the stimulus passed. Do you see that uh, progress continuing, or can we expect that there might be some dips even into negative job growth in the coming months? Jake, the numbers fluctuate from month to month, and no good business runs itself based on every weekly or monthly fluctuation. And the president's uh, focus is on building a stronger economy so we don't have debacles like the last uh, couple of years again. So there might be but some I think, But, but I, my expectation would be that the trend is uh, going to uh, be upwards. Uh, we talk a great deal uh, to uh, businesses. We monitor all the statistics. And the steps that the president is taking should bring about an increased level of employment. But look, we don't have enough in place. That's why the president has put forward measures uh, to uh, the Congress for the credit for small business, for uh, incentives that will let people spend money and put people to work retrofitting their homes to uh, make them more energy efficient, to preserve jobs on the front lines for teachers uh, and uh, for policemen. What happens will depend on choices we make, and there is much more that we can do, and the president is pushing for the adoption of those measures, even as we focus on implementing and continuing to implement the strong set of measures in the President's Recovery Act. Where do you think we're going to be in September? Are we going to, are we going to still be at 9.7 unemployment, or is it going to go down a little? You know, the, the good news is that if you look at what's happened in the first quarter of this uh, year, it's hardly satisfactory, but it is running somewhat ahead 
of what the administration was uh, forecasting because our forecasts uh, were conservative. And I'd expect uh, continued progress in job creation. And as you see progress in job creation, uh, you tend to see unemployment go down. It's not quite as simple as some people uh, think, Jake, because as conditions get better, more people decide to look for work and are counted as in the labor force. So sometimes it's frustrating and the progress doesn't show up immediately in the unemployment rate, but it's progress nonetheless in giving jobs to people who need them. And that is what is the president's top economic priority uh, for this year. You know, all of us, I mean, the president talks about this uh, with us uh, each week. Uh, the letters that he receives from the families where right. kids are worried about whether their parents are going to be able to hold on to uh, their job. Well, and if I could that's why we're so focused on this jobs issue. There are a lot of members of Congress who are concerned about jobs because of China, because of what they see, the manipulation of currency by China. The Obama administration had uh, scheduled uh, a semi-annual report to Congress on currency in which it was going to state whether or not the Obama administration believes that currency is being manipulated. That report, we learned this weekend, is going to be delayed. Is it going to be delayed because the Obama administration needs China's cooperation on other things such as sanctions against Iran? No. That's not no. the reason. It's being delayed because that's part of our international economic dialogue, which is directed at supporting a crucial issue for jobs creation, doubling our level of exports, and that depends on what other countries do. We've got three major meetings, a meeting of the G20 finance ministers, our strategic dialogue that takes place every year with uh, China, and then the president's uh, meeting, building on the forum he created in uh, London uh, in Pittsburgh uh, last year of the G20 countries. And those are opportunities to engage with China, to engage with other countries that have uh, large trade surpluses, other countries who think they can continue to rely on the United States as an importer of last uh, resort. And Secretary Geithner's judgment, and I think it was the right one, was that we could report and recommend to Congress in a much more effective way after we had had those meetings and taken stock of what kind of measurable progress we were able to generate uh, out of uh, those dialogues. But look, at this point, given the seriousness of the uh, recession that uh, we have been uh, through, given the number of Americans who are out of uh, work, uh, the economic issues have to be at the center and will be at the center of our diplomacy. Okay. The um, president has said he wants in the next few weeks, he wants the Senate to pass financial regulatory reform. Uh, first of all, just quickly, do you guys have the 60 votes to pass Senator Chris Dodd's bill uh, on financial regulatory reform? I expect uh, that reform is uh, going to pass. It's not easy. Uh, you've got a million dollars being spent per congressman in lobbying expenses on this issue. Industry has four lobbyists per member of the House and uh, Senate uh, working on this. But the case for basic consumer protection, the case for regulating institutions that are able to bring the economy down and not leaving them completely unregulated, the case that we've got to be able to handle the failure of an institution without a major bailout through so-called resolution uh, authority, the case that we can't let institutions uh, choose their own regulator mm -hmm. and play one regulator off and against another to uh, reduce standards, that case is so compelling that uh, we are confident uh, that a sufficient majority will see that case and will vote uh, to support uh, financial uh, reform. We've, come a, we've come, a long, come a long way on this issue. We're now in uh, the final stages, and our expectation is uh, that we will get there, and there's no question. I mean, how can anyone take uh, the position after what has happened? After, and it's not the first thing that's well, happened. Some, some, some Democrats... That we, don't need, that we don't need comprehensive financial reform. Well, some There'll be work on the details, but not compromise on the principles. Some Democrats say it doesn't go far enough. Here's Delaware Democrat 
uh, Ted Kaufman talking about the Dodd bill. Unless Congress breaks up the mega banks that are too big to fail, the American taxpayer will remain the ultimate guarantor of an almost certain to repeat itself cycle of boom, bust, and bailout. Senator Kaufman saying that there isn't being enough being done about too big to fail. In 2000, you said, quote, it is certain that a healthy financial system cannot be built on the expectation of bailouts. Can you honestly say that the Dodd bill changes that? Yes, I can. It, chain, it reduces the expectation of bailouts by insisting that institutions have much more capital so they won't need to be bailed out. It eliminates the prospect of bailout by creating a framework in which a, a failure can be managed with creditors taking responsibility. It restricts, and this was the important uh, point that uh, former Fed Chairman Paul Volcker has stressed, it restricts the pro so-called proprietary trading activities, some of the most risky activities of uh, these uh, institutions. So yes, this bill is a direct attack on too large uh, to fail by making failure a possibility as it has to be in a market system and by making these institutions much safer and much sounder. Senator Kaufman is exactly right. Uh, lastly, uh, we only have uh, a minute left, but there have been reports lately that you're, you're thinking of leaving. Um, are, I know you've, you've said uh, that the reports are not true, but are you committed to staying in your current position throughout at least November 2012? Jake, uh, you know uh, that in this town, when it comes to personality stories, uh, usually it's the case that those who talk don't know and those who know uh, don't talk. Well, you I know. am very happy. <laughs> I am uh, having an enormously satisfying experience uh, working with this president and that's what I'm committed to doing and serve at his pleasure. Until November 2012? Serve at his, serve at his I serve at his... Assuming uh, that he would I like you to I serve ser until... I serve at his pleasure. I, I don't get into hypothetical uh, questions. I'm having an enormously satisfying experience. All right, Dr. Larry Summers, thank you so much. Thank you.